sure a lot of you are aware that you can do a systematic literature review or a meta-analysis, two different types of papers, and I've talked about each of them on this channel as well. But few people are actually aware that you can combine the two, meaning you can do a systematic literature review and a meta-analysis in one paper. And I haven't really seen anybody on YouTube talk about it. And there are a lot of advantages of doing this paper to get a systematic literature review and a meta-analysis in one paper. So that's why in this video, I want to walk you through exactly how this type of paper would be written, what is the structure, what language you should use, what are the procedures and the methodology for this type of paper, again, combining a systematic literature review and a meta-analysis. And I think this is really going to help you to get your papers into those higher impact Scopus Index journals. So typically we think of a systematic review and a meta-analysis as two separate types of studies. However, in some fields, it is sometimes possible to actually combine them and do a systematic review and meta-analysis in one paper. And this is exactly what I want to discuss in this video and show you how this is done in case you want to do a similar study for yourself. And before I dive into it, I also wanted to thank uh, Lisette Britz, who's a researcher on um, my program, Research Paper Mastery, for bringing it uh, to my attention and sharing with me example uh, papers. Um, without her bringing it to my attention, I probably wouldn't have noticed that because it's not something that is done extensively in various fields, uh, but it seems to be quite specific, for example, to medicine in this case. But with that said, um, let's take a very quick look at how this is done. And I won't dive into like a lot of details about, you know, how to structure the introduction, um, how to structure each um, single section of this paper, because this is already presented in a lot of depth on Research Paper Mastery and PhD Accelerator. So I will just point out the, the differences between, you know, just doing a systematic review and just doing a, a meta-analysis and how it's going to be different if you combine a systematic review and a meta-analysis. So for more kind of in-depth uh, training specifically on structuring a systematic review or specifically on writing a meta-analysis, definitely check out the relevant videos on research paper mastery. With that said though, you know, the, the first main difference um, as you read the paper really is going to be the aim, you know, that in the aim, you know, it's just going to say this systematic review and a meta-analysis. The rest of the introduction is going to be exactly the same as we would normally write it. So you start with introducing the key concept and why this concept is important, why this topic is important, right? And then you briefly review the literature on this topic. So that's number two in the, in the introduction. And then number three, you state uh, the gap, okay? And then you present the aim. And it's really, you know, in the aim where for the first time you say that this is going to be a systematic review and a meta-analysis. So that's the first kind of difference, okay? Now, in terms of the materials and methods, um, there are kind of two ways in which you can really structure it. The first one will be exactly the same as you would structure, you know, either a systematic review or a meta-analysis materials and methods sections. There really isn't any difference because first you discuss the search strategy, okay? Um, you know, which framework you used for the search strategy, uh, which databases you, you searched, right? Uh, which search keywords or concepts did you use and how they were combined what operators you used. Then in the next section, you present the inclusion and exclusion criteria. It's good to, you know, have a numbered list here so the reader can clearly see what the inclusion and exclusion criteria are, uh, right? And then you tell us how the data extraction took place. You know, if you used any specific guidelines for that, such as Prisma, quality assessment, if that's relevant, and then statistical analysis. So notice that, you know, if, if you were to do just a systematic review, your materials and methods would probably start stop here, right? But if you're doing a meta-analysis, 
you need statistical analysis. So you're going to have both of these sections, data extraction and statistical analysis, where, whereas in the systematic review, you would not have a section on statistical analysis. You would have that section, though, if you were writing a meta-analysis, just a meta-analysis. Right. So that's one way to structure the materials and methods. Pretty simple. And it follows almost the same pattern as a systematic review or as a meta analysis on its own would, uh, which is also presented in more depth on research paper mastery. Now, there is also a, a slightly different way of, of structuring it. Um, so in here, um, you know, it first start with how the search process took place for the systematic review. So that's kind of like the first step before you get to the statistical analysis, right? The meta-analysis is really just the statistical analysis of all the results of the studies included. And the systematic review is, you know, is everything that kind of happens before, if you see what I mean, right? All the, all the steps that happened before. They talk about which studies were included. Um, and again, they use the Prisma as well to do that, which databases were searched, which keywords as well, and how the references were exported and analyzed and what was done with the full text. Okay. And then we also have data extraction and synthesis, how that was done. And this is specific to a systematic review. Okay. And then in here, instead of calling it statistical analysis, so if we look here on this previous uh, materials and methods that I showed you, Right? It's just called statistical analysis, whereas in here, it's called meta-analysis, because really a meta-analysis is a statistical analysis of previously conducted studies. Okay, So it's just a different name, but the, the purpose is exactly the same. You just tell us how the data that you extract from all those studies included in your meta-analysis, how it was statistically analyzed. That's, that's basically the whole, the whole purpose here. So it's, it's kind of exactly the same as in here, it's just a different name. What, what do we do then in the results section? The first section of the results, like, like it would be in, in a systematic review or a meta-analysis if these were done separately, it's no different. It, you just provide us some background information about the studies that were included. So this is the same here. If we look at this study as well, it's the same. In the results, the search identified this, you know, and you, you just provide some more background information about the studies. For example, where they were conducted, what were the types of studies that were included, and so on. Any information about the studies that are relevant, you provide it typically in the first section of the results. Next, this, this will depend on your research question, but imagine your research question is about, for example, the, the patient characteristics and who are the patients included in those studies, where they came from, what were the health issues and, and things like that, right? So you basically organize the results section by topics. You will present that numerical data in tables, but you will also describe it and, and analyze it as you would in a systematic review. So that's kind of the systematic review part of the, of the paper in which data is, is analyzed more thematically. Now, with that said, you know, in a, in a systematic review, if a systematic review was done on its own without a meta-analysis, this description of the data and analysis of the data would be much more in-depth. In here, it's still much more focused on the numbers. But nevertheless, the first sections of, you know, of this systematic review and a meta-analysis are more about the thematic analysis of the studies, not the statistics, not the meta-analysis, right? And which themes or topics are analyzed? This really depends on, on your research question. Now, afterwards, we get into to the nitty-gritty of the statistics, uh, which I'll admit I don't understand much about, but nevertheless, you can see that in here, you know, you've got lots of tables and numbers where you combine the, the data from the previous studies to basically reanalyze them statistically. So you put all the numbers from the previous studies and you reanalyze them statistically, okay? And you present that to the reader. For example, you know, if you look at this sentence, the pool statistics showed an overall effect size indicated by da da da, right? So this part of the results section is about the meta-analysis is about statistics. It's not about the thematic presentation of the data as it was in the previous section and as it would be in a systematic um, review. So you'll typically see a lot of figures as well. And as I said, you know, 
this is all about you know the effect sizes the p-values you know and specific numbers from the statistical analysis i.e from the meta-analysis of the studies included in this paper so this will be the the main difference in terms of presenting the the results okay so just to just to recap uh, the results if you have a systematic review and a meta-analysis done together the first section of the of the results will be you know background information about the studies where these studies were conducted how many and so on and then the the first few sections depending on your research question and what you're trying to achieve will be a thematic analysis of the included studies and the data and then the following section or sections will be about the statistical analysis about the meta analysis of these studies so that's that's really the main difference is just you know putting the two together a systematic review and a meta analysis in terms of discussion really this will be the same as if you were doing the meta analysis or a systematic review uh, separately so i won't spend a lot of time discussing it because it's included um, in research paper mastery in a lot of detail but basically it's it's more about not just presenting the numbers but telling us what these numbers actually mean what are the implications of this for example for for practice what are the implications of this for theory perhaps the results of your systematic review and meta-analysis can lead you to present a new theory a, a new theoretical framework um, and so on then typically we have limitations of the study and then conclusions you know um, the conclusions can vary in length in here it was very short because the discussion section uh, was much longer or it can be more extensive if the discussion is shorter in here the limitations of the study were included um, as a separate section this of course could be just part of the discussion section or just part of the conclusion section so that kind of depends but it would be done in exactly the same way as if you were doing a systematic review or a meta-analysis separately which again you know we discuss in a lot of depth on research paper mastery so i'm not going to dive into this right here but with that said um, to sum up the, the main differences between doing a, a systematic review and a meta-analysis together and doing them separately is basically you know the aim that in the aim he says it was a meta-analysis and a systematic review and um, the materials and methods that you will include both how the data was extracted and analyzed thematically and how it was analyzed statistically for the meta-analysis right so you'll have both of these things and then the results section where you will present you know both uh, really the um, the thematic analysis though this will be much less extensive than in a systematic review on its own and you will present the statistical analysis i.e the meta analysis now if you've enjoyed this video but you want more personalized one-to-one -one help writing your papers submitting them and ultimately publishing them in top journals in your field then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team we're going to identify your biggest challenges and show you a simple three to four step action plan that we've used with over 400 PhD students and researchers that can also help you to publish papers in better journals. And the link to that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below the video.